Arirang News. I'm Mark Broom. Let's kick things off with a look at the day's headlines. North Korea sets its Winter Olympic performances in South Korea, February 8th in Kangnung and three days later in Seoul. It's also in sending players to join the South in forming an inter-Korean ice hockey team. They arrive on Thursday. Taking it to the top, South Korea's trade ministry files a petition with the World Trade Organization against the U.S. government for slapping excessive duties on Korean washing machine and solar panel imports to the United States. Plus, a volatile 24 hours for the Ring of Fire, more seismic activity globally, with a massive earthquake near the coast of Alaska, another quake in Indonesia, and two volcanoes waking up here in Asia. Our top story this morning, though. North Korea has selected two venues in South Korea for its art performance concerts to celebrate the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics. The decision was reached a matter of days after a delegation led by the country's most famous pop star inspected numerous different spots in the south. On the sporting side, the North says its women ice hockey players will arrive in the south within the next 24 to 48 hours to join up with their South Korean counterparts as they prepare to compete in the same unified team. Lee Sung Jae starts us off. After a close inspection of some of the possible concert venues for the North Korean Art Performance Group, the North Korean delegation led by Hyun song War, the head of the North's Samjian Orchestra, has selected two concert venues to celebrate the 2018 Pyeongchang Winter Olympics. According to the South Korean Unification Ministry on Tuesday, North Korea said its art troupe hopes to perform at the Gangneung Arts Center in Gangneung, a coastal city located about 260 kilometers east of Seoul and one of the Olympic venues along with Pyeongchang on February 8th and the National Theatre of Korea in Seoul on February 11th. The North added that its delegation, which includes a 140-member art performance group of orchestra, singers and dancers, plans to cross the land border into South Korea on February 6th for the concerts before returning home on February 12th. North Korea has also confirmed that it will send a 15-member ice hockey team of 12 players, a head coach and two support personnel to South Korea on Thursday. The South had proposed that they arrive as soon as possible for training with their South Korean counterparts ahead of competing as a unified team. With the world's biggest international winter sporting event kicking off in Pyeongchang in right around a fortnight, hopes are high that the end result will be a more peaceful peninsula. Lee Seung Jae, Arirang News. Now, after weeks of will he or won't he, we now have confirmation that Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe will attend the opening ceremony of the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics. South Korea's presidential office of Chongwa Day has confirmed that Japan has officially requested talks on the visit through the Japanese embassy and said the two sides will work out the details. There had been speculation. He wouldn't attend over soured relations between the two over the issue of Japan's wartime sexual enslavement of Korean women. The South Korean government special task force recently announced that the 2015 bilateral agreement on the issue was seriously flawed. And President Moon Jae-in himself added weight to the issue, saying the deal does not resolve the issue. Tokyo responded by saying that relations between the two would become unmanageable should Seoul seek a renegotiation. Despite it all, though, President Moon has repeatedly stated that he would like Pre Prime Minister Abe to attend the opening ceremony. So there are just over two weeks left until the 2018 Pyeongchang Winter Olympics kick off. Busy putting the final touches on the global celebration of sport, the organising committee has given everyone a sneak peek of what to expect during the opening and closing ceremonies. Our EG1 reports from Pyeongchang. The concepts have been revealed for the opening and closing ceremonies of the 2018 Pyeongchang Winter Olympics. They are harmony and convergence. On Monday, the organizing committee and the directors of the ceremonies held a press briefing to share some of the details and the preparations they're making. From the harmony of tradition and modern-day culture to that of nature and modern buildings, 
Harmony is a basic Korean value. Through convergence, Korea has been able to spread its culture worldwide and become a leading IT nation. With performances that illustrate these two values, we hope to convey the messages of peace and passion. They also unveiled the Olympic cauldron for the ceremonies. The cauldron resembles a moon jar, a type of traditional Korean white porcelain representing Korean notions of beauty through empty space and simplicity, as well as conveying the message of participation and harmony. While the specific layout of the ceremonies could not be shared, they did reveal the basic storylines of the events. The opening ceremony is based on the journey of five children searching for answers to peace and features Korean legends and history. The closing ceremony focuses on the challenges ahead with musical and dance performances. To the question of whether North Korean art troops will perform in the opening ceremony, Director Song said that while it hasn't been confirmed, the International Olympic Committee has mentioned an appearance by Pyongyang's taekwondo performers before the opening ceremony begins. It's expected to be extremely cold on the days of the ceremonies, so the committee also explained its plans to deal with that. On top of constructing a windscreen around the Olympic Stadium, they have also built 40 patio heaters and 18 windproof shelters around the venue to prevent hypothermia. The committee will be providing visitors with winter gear, including hot packs, blankets and raincoats, but said it's vital that spectators dress warmly and come prepared. In preparation for more than 20,000 spectators expected to come to the opening ceremony, the committee has also prepared a range of transportation services, one of which is the Ku Pyeongchang mobile application. The application launches on Wednesday and will display all the different ways of getting to the venues and help out with reservations. With just over two weeks left until the games kick off, the organizing committee said it'll do its best to warmly welcome the world and make Pyeongchang 2018 an unforgettable experience. Lee ji Arirang News, Pyeongchang. North Korea is preparing to hold a major military parade on the eve of the Winter Olympics here in South Korea, setting February 8th, the day before the opening ceremony, as its official founding day. The regime's armed forces are going to put on a display for the world to see, and it's going to be showing off its most advanced weapons, our Park Jun reports. A grand display of all its missiles and artillery. That's what's expected of North Korea on February 8th. The North state-run news agency KCNA reported Tuesday that the regime has designated February 8th as the official founding day of its military forces. The anniversary was originally celebrated on February 8th, but in 1978, Kim Il-sung moved it to April 25th, the day anti-Japanese forces were established. Now it has been moved back. The modern military was formed on February 8th, 1948. Kim Jong-un is choosing to mark the founding day to that date to focus on the fact that North Korea is a full-fledged nuclear state that has strong military power. Experts say that the parade is highly likely to show off North Korea's nuclear weapons. It will be a way for leader Kim Jong-un to make a statement to the international community that despite its diplomatic peace gestures, the North's military and nuclear capabilities remain strong. If the celebrations do take place on February 8th, they would fall on the eve of the 2018 PyeongChang Winter Olympics. Although the North may not have designated the date directly because of the Olympics, it is likely that it wanted to take advantage of the global event as a means to display more power. Although the designation was mainly due to internal reasons, North Korea would have considered the Olympics as a way to add more meaning to the founding day and receive more attention when it boasts its nuclear power. North Korea's appearance at the Olympics had shown to be a sign of improving relations. But although the anniversary celebrations could dent that Korean thaw in inter-Korean ties, it is likely that Kim Jong-un will push forward with the parade. Park Hee-jun, Arirang News. Now, the CIA believes North Korea's missile development is aimed at coercion, not just self-defense, and that Kim Jong-un's logical next step would be to develop weapons capable of firing multiple missiles at the U.S. mainland. The agency's director, Mike Pompeo, said on Tuesday that North Korea's missile program is not merely a showpiece. He also said it was vital to deter Pyongyang from proliferating its nuclear missile technology to other countries. Pompeo added that while President Trump's focus 
is on a diplomatic solution to the crisis. The CIA is working to provide him with a range of other options should diplomacy fail. U.S. President Donald Trump has signed authorizations for safeguard tariffs on imports of washing machines and solar panels, sparking an outcry here in South Korea and also in other parts around the world. Trump's decision is expected to deal a huge blow to some South Korean manufacturers. As a result, it has prompted Seoul to consider filing a complaint with the World Trade Organization. Park so with the details. Driven by President Trump's America First trade policies, the move marks the first time in 16 years for the United States to issue such safeguard measures. Trump on Tuesday signed into law tough new tariffs on imported washing machines and solar panels in a bid to create new jobs and protect U.S. manufacturers from foreign competition. Our action today helps to create jobs in America for Americans. It will provide a strong incentive for LG and Samsung to follow through on their recent promises to build major manufacturing plants for washing machines right here in the United States. For both solar and washing machines, these executive actions uphold the principle of fair trade and demonstrate to the world that the United States will not be taken advantage of anymore. President Trump also told reporters after signing the proclamations that there won't be a trade war. Under the measures, a 20 percent tariff will be imposed on imports for the first 1.2 million washers and 50 percent on all subsequent imports, with tariffs lowering in the next two years. Korea's Samsung and LG Electronics, as well as Hanwha Q-Cells and Hyundai Heavy Industries, are expected to be a hit hard by the measures. Samsung and LG export a combined volume of 2.5 million washers to the U.S. every year, worth around $1 billion. Up in arms over the move, the South Korean government is planning to file a complaint with the World Trade Organization over what it calls a violation of WTO provisions. We regret the latest U.S. safeguard measures against our industry. They are excessive and would clearly violate WTO rules. We will actively respond to protectionist measures to protect our national interest and resolve the industry's difficulties. The South Korean trade minister, a former senior lawyer at the WTO, says Seoul can win the case should they file a suit. According to the WTO, the South Korean government has filed a petition against the U.S. on 11 different occasions, and South Korea has won eight times. However, even if South Korea wins, it will take at least two years for the U.S. to implement the outcome. In what looks to be a huge blow to the booming global industry, South Korea is vowing to actively respond to the Trump administration's broader protectionist agenda and cooperate with other WTO members to defend its legitimate rights. Park so Arirang News. Now, some good news uh, on the uh, economic front. The European Union has removed South Korea from its blacklist of tax havens. Seoul's finance ministry said on Tuesday that eight countries, including South Korea, had been taken off the list of non-cooperative jurisdictions for tax purposes, easing concerns of punitive economic measures and reputational damage. The other seven countries are Panama, Mongolia, Barbados, Macau, Tunisia, Grenada and the UAE. Back in December, EU finance ministers put 17 countries on their blacklist, calling the taxation systems in those countries unfair. The U.S. Senate has confirmed Jerome Powell as the next chair of the Federal Reserve. The Senate confirmed Powell in an 85 to 12 vote on Tuesday, despite some Republican opposition. The 64-year-old lawyer and former investment banker who was nominated by President Trump in November has served on the Fed's Board of Governors since 2012. With his four-year term beginning next month, he will succeed Janet Yellen. The Fed is projecting three rate hikes in 2018 and two next year. Now, turning to the ongoing government efforts to regulate the local virtual currency market or cryptocurrency markets, in a week's time, new accounts can only be created using real names. That means traders can no longer make transactions anonymously. Now, Lee Jong-yeon with the details. 
After explosive growth in the number of cryptocurrency traders in South Korea, the government announced back in December that it would ban the creation of new anonymous accounts in an effort to curb the trading frenzy. On Tuesday, it announced that virtual currency traders can create new accounts under their real names starting January 30th. Prior to these measures, currency exchanges issued encrypted virtual accounts to investors for trading. But the new measures will only allow real-name bank accounts with matching accounts at virtual currency exchanges for transactions. What this means is that now, transactions are no longer anonymous. This could help prevent illegal activities such as money laundering or tax evasion. Also, with the banks requiring personal information, foreigners and minors could be prevented from setting up accounts. Experts say the new measures may not bring significant changes, at least in the short term. I don't think there's going to be a noticeable difference, but it's going to be very difficult to see anyway, because, well, cryptocurrency right now is such a volatile investment uh, that you'll continually see very large fluctuations in prices. He adds, however, that the real name system is a good stepping stone for other changes that could eventually reduce market volatility. The real name system, I think, is a first step to imposing taxes. Uh, I believe that it's uh, probably useful to have taxes on cryptocurrency investments because, well, right now, at least in Korea, taxes are not being imposed on these finan uh, cryptocurrency transactions. And because of that, I think it makes uh, cryptocurrency investments more popular than it should be. Were this to happen, it would mean virtual currency trading would become similar to trading of commodities such as stocks and bonds. Lee jong Arirang News. Now, prosecutors looking into alleged bribery during the former Lee myung -bak administration are widening their probe to two relatives of the ex-president. The Seoul Central District Prosecutor's Office has called in the former president's elder brother and former six-party, uh, six-term lawmaker Lee Sang-duk for questioning over allegations he received money from the National Intelligence Service while serving as a member of the then ruling party. The 83-year-old, however, turned down the call, instead requesting that he appear on Friday, citing schedule conflicts and health issues. The summons comes a day after investigators raided his residence and office in Seoul to confiscate evidence. And in a separate but somewhat related case, prosecutors have summoned Lee Dong Hyung, a nephew of the ex president, over his involvement in the alleged creation of the former leader's slush fund at a family run auto parts maker called Das. He, also a vice president of Das, appeared at the Seoul Eastern District Prosecutor's Office around 20 minutes ago. Now, in sports news, Korean tennis star Jung Hyun, who's been dubbed giant killer for defeating two world-class opponents at the Australian Open, is set for his quarter-final clash against Tennis Sangren later today. The 21-year-old tennis sensation, who defeated fourth-ranked Alexander Zverev and 14th-ranked uh, Novak Djokovic on his way to the last eight will face off against the 97th ranked American who became just the second player in the last 20 years to make the quarterfinals on his Australian Open debut. Jung, the first Korean in history to make the last eight of a Grand Slam, is widely being heralded as one of the best players of the next generation. Now for a look at the stories making headlines around the world and we're going to start with a spate of natural disasters. The Ring of Fire has sparked earthquakes and volcanic eruptions on the opposite ends of the Pacific Ocean. For more on this and other news, let's turn to our Noah Aram. So Aram, this all happened in the space of 24 hours or so. Which natural disaster hit where and just how bad is the damage? Well, Mark, the most recent was a massive 7.9 magnitude earthquake that hit the southern coast of Alaska on Tuesday. It caused a tsunami warning to be issued across the west coast of the United States, Canada and Mexico. But that warning has now been lifted. But officials are still advising residents to stay away from coastlines for the time being. 
On the other hand, of, uh, on the other side rather, of the Pacific Ocean, another 6.0 quake rocked Indonesia, with more than 100 buildings being damaged and several people getting injured. The tremor occurred just off the coast of the western island of Java, but Indonesian officials did not issue a tsunami warning. Meanwhile, a volcano erupted near a mountain ski resort in Japan. A soldier there was reported to have been killed after being hit by an avalanche triggered by the eruption, which took place on Mount Kuzatsu Shirani in Kunma Prefecture, located about 186 kilometers north of Tokyo. More than a dozen people have been injured also, some critically. In the Philippines, several days of increasingly intense activity at its most active volcano has sparked authorities to raise the alert level to the second highest level of four, which means a hazardous eruption is imminent. Mount Mayon, located on the large island of Luzon, has been gushing lava fountains as high as 700 metres into the air along with ash clouds. More than 56,000 villagers are now camped in emergency shelters. Meanwhile, Paris is bracing for possible flooding after relentless rain swelled the River Seine, causing it to burst its banks. Authorities have closed several roads near the French's capital's uh, city hall, suspended boat cruises and several rail, rail lines serving tourist destinations, including the Eiffel Tower, will also close on Wednesday. Forecasters warned that the water level is expected to keep rising in the coming days. It has now reached nearly five metres and is expected to peak at about six later this week, though these levels are still too low to pose a real danger to residents. The river reached a record high of more than 8.6 metres back in 1910 when thousands of Parisians had to flee the flooded low-lying areas of the city. Two students have been killed and 17 others injured in a high school shooting in the U.S. state of Kentucky. A 15-year-old boy who has not been identified opened fire at students with a handgun just before classes started at Marshall County High School on Tuesday. Authorities declined to discuss the uh, possible motives. There was no immediate indication of how well the suspect knew the victims, but officials said he was believed to have acted alone and faces multiple charges of murder and attempted murder. White House spokeswoman Sarah Sanders expressed her condolences and said President Trump had been briefed. Good morning. It will feel like being in a freezer all day today. Morning lows dropped to minus 17 degrees Celsius here in the capital, with a cold wave warning being issued in Seoul for the first time in two years. And even Busan and Ulsan are under the season's first cold wave advisory. And for the daily highs, Seoul will only inch up to minus 10 degrees Celsius this afternoon. Daegu and Daejeon will make it to minus 5 and minus 6 degrees respectively. This round of extreme cold wave will be with us until Friday. Then things will get slightly better, but we won't see highs in the positive territory for the time being. So stay bundled up. With that, let's take a look at the international weather for beers around the world. Well, most of South Korea is in a grip of an extreme cold snap. Most cities in North Korea will have even colder temperatures under mostly sunny skies. And as for the rest of Asia, Beijing and Seoul will have a freezing day along with low humidity levels. Meanwhile, those of you in Melbourne and Wellington must be taking a full advantage of warm weather with highs in the mid-20s. Heading to North America, Montreal will wake up to Wednesday to a city filled with freezing air, but this round of cold snap will be short-lived. As for South America, Sao Paulo will see scattered thunderstorms at a high of 32 degrees Celsius. Taking you to Europe, Moscow had the darkest December in 2017 since the city began recording the data. The average amount of sunlight for December is 18 hours, but they only had 6 minutes for last month. Lastly, to Africa, it's going to be a rainy day in Tripoli at a high of 18 degrees Celsius. And that's LV weather update for now. 
And that's all the news we have for now as well on this Wednesday morning here in Seoul. Our next bulletin is coming up at noon, Korea time. So until then, goodbye.